This episode of The Lou Rockwell Show is sponsored by... Does civil disobedience really get you excited? Go to freestateproject.org, get signed up, move to New Hampshire, get involved with the next wave of liberty activism, and be the next Rosa Parks. The Free State Project is your best chance for liberty in your lifetime. freestateproject.org This is The Lou Rockwell Show. Lou, how you doing? I'm fine, Brian. How are you doing? Great, 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 great. Good, uh, good to have you back on the show. Great to hang with uh, Tom Woods at uh, CPAC a couple of weeks ago. Great oh, guy. Oh, well, yeah, he's, he is a great guy. Man, I tell you, we're going to have him back on talk about meltdown and uh, all the rest of that business. I want to talk to you for a minute about the left, the right, and the state. Your uh, your new book, the um, five hundred and some odd pages. Though you you try to give Ayn Rand a run for her money. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm tr- I'm trying to show why. Neither the right, we've just lived through eight years of the Bush administration, nor the left, as we're finding out with the Obama administration, is the answer, and that uh, freedom is the answer, and that uh, neither the left or the right have done a very good job of giving us any freedom or even of, you know, of not taking away our freedom. These days, you know, I'm satisfied if they're not kicking me in the teeth. But, of course, they are kicking us in the teeth, whether it's the, the Bush Republicans or the Obama Democrats. And uh, I think, you know, obviously the libertarianism and and the, the concern on the state. You'll notice that whenever anybody's talking about public policy, they never mention the state. But everything in public policy, and in all these issues in Washington involves, what are we going to have the state do? And we have to remember the state is the gun. That is the, the, the gun they put to your head, and they say, do this, or we're going to jail you, and if you resist, we're going to kill you. That's the government. So there's never any, nobody ever talks about that when they're talking about you know, have a new stimulus, they have to do that by force, or whether it's, you know, all the Bush's wars and bombing people and everything. Um, so it's, I want to always focus on what are they willing to use coercion for. That's what the government does. It coerces you into things. Every time you sign any government form, you'll notice you're swearing that they can uh, put you in jail if you're not, if you're not, in their view, telling you the truth. I don't think that's something that uh, folks uh, bear in mind when you hear, uh, you know, there ought to be a law. I mean, that's like handing the government another bullet to point at you. Well, you know, the government, the government is the entity that claims the right to kill you if you sufficiently resist paying your parking ticket. Ultimately, that's, yeah. That's the mm-hmm. government. So that's that bunch of people who, you know, are the, the SWAT team guys. Um, it's the libertarian view that we want to minimize uh, SWAT teams in society and allow people to peacefully deal with each other. Uh, and allow a cons- you know as um, uh, was famously said once, uh, capitalist acts between consenting adults, they shouldn't be illegal. And yet the Obama administration, like the Bush administration, is busy outlawing those acts. Well, in your uh, beating back Obamanomics, uh, you know you, you point out it's uh, it's raining, it's pouring. Uh, these uh, economic fallacies by the hour. We were discussing in the last half hour how talking about energy and and uh, and education and uh, and these things are you know are are not focusing at all on economics. Meanwhile, over on the economic side, uh, either nothing is being done to directly address the issue, or whatever is being done to directly address the issue is disastrous. Well, you know, we there's one great unmentionable in all discussions of the economy. It's never talked about, and that's the Federal Reserve. And yet it is the Federal Reserve's vast increase in the money supply that brought on the boom, the artificial boom, the crazy housing boom, the crazy mall boom, commercial real estate boom, all the various booms in which there was all kinds of investments made that were mistakes. People bought houses they shouldn't have bought. Businessmen undertook projects they shouldn't have undertook that they thought they'd be able to complete but it turns out there's no savings to justify it, and the whole thing was an illusion. So the Fed created this illusion. They blew up the bubble. The bubble inevitably gets pricked. It has to. It can't continue forever. Then we have a return to reality. So the government's already done all this damage to us. What they, the best thing for them to do is, I don't know, I'll go take a, a vacation in the Bahamas for a while, just get out of our hair. <laughs> That's the best thing they can do is not make things worse. Needless to say, they're doing everything possible to make things worse, and they're copying what, uh, what, what uh, Herbert Hoover and Franklin Roosevelt did in the 1930s and turning a bad recession into a, you know, a 17-year Great Depression. Let me, let me ask you this. The, I, 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 try, I ran this by uh, uh, Tom Woods when we were uh, talking in D.C. a little bit. The, um, i got to put on my tinfoil hat for this because it, it kind of you know, gets there uh, out around the fringes a little just to set up the question. Uh, the 
you, you've mentioned, uh, and in my conversations with uh, Walter Williams, Stephen Moore, Tom Woods, you know, and so on, and reading, uh, reading very smart people at LouRockwell.com, that the these things all have. In fact, we spend an awful lot of time focusing on the historical precedents. We've been through, you know, Coolidge and Hoover and and FDR and the Depression and you know, blah blah blah, blah the crash of Wall Street. And so what that's what that says is that you know we've got a history. We've got a history of uh, John Maynard Keynes, all his nonsense back then, the things, all these things that didn't work over and over and over again. Now you get these, I, I assume, reasonably intelligent people, uh, Harvard Law School and all the rest of that, now are in power, and they're doing all these things almost identical to what happened 50 years ago. And the cliche, those who don't learn from history are about to repeat it, notwithstanding. Uh, you're, you're almost left with the uh, objective conclusion, or in this case, the question, do they know what they're doing? Is it possible that uh, when, you, when you look at a socialist agenda and their requirement for the dependency on government, or for people to be dependent on government, that mashing the stock market, ruining the economy, taking over education and, and, uh, and energy and, uh, and so on, and, and health care, that this could all just be part of the, part of the plan? You know, I, I don't think so. They're not that smart. Oh. I mean, I think this <laughs> took them. I, I think it took them all by surprise. But the truth in what you're saying is, as Rahm Emanuel put it, mm. you don't ever let a crisis go unused. So, you know, this is a crisis, and when there's a crisis, government loves it. And uh, right after 9/11, um, even though the government had fallen flat on its face, it couldn't even protect its own military headquarters. Nevertheless, the answer was, hey, give the government far more money and far more power. Well, once again, the government has fallen flat on its face. It's caused this artificial boom. Um, it didn't, you know, and then we have the bust. So the answer to them is always, hey, give us more money and more power. And that's what the whole Obama administration is about. It's not just the Democrats. It's what Bush and his TARP was about. It's what, in fact, the whole Bush administration was about, it vastly expanding the government. This is what the Republicans and the Democrats agree on, expand the government when we're in charge. So, you know, it's they. some of them, I think, actually believe that maybe Keynesianism will take us out of the Depression, uh, and this is a Depression. Uh, some of them um, maybe don't believe that. Maybe they're just glorying in the... Because Keynesianism is the economics of government power. So I guess they're, you know, they're glorying in that. But they are doing the same sort of thing. For example, Herbert Hoover, when bananas trying to keep food prices from falling... The only th- good thing that happens in a depression from the standpoint of the average person is prices go down. So what does the government try to do? Tries to prevent that, tries to make prices go up again, which is, you know, like define the law of gravity. In our own time, housing prices have to fall. Remember these people all blab about affordable housing? Well, we're finally getting affordable housing, and of course they're going bananas trying to prevent it. Housing prices have to fall. They were way too high. All prices have to fall. Although, with what the Federal Reserve is doing, they've pumped up the money supply by perhaps $9 trillion, far more than the federal budget. So at some point, we're going to see the, the most peacetime inflation in the history of this country. Let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back. 